Okay, so I have, I'm holding a camera. I usually do this on the board, but this is a request, so I'm going to go over this. Uh, sorry about the shakiness. Okay, so here we have an object, and it's moving with what we call quadratic air resistance. So that means that we have this air force pushing on it, and it's moving this way. And these are actually vectors, but everything's in one dimension, so we can kind of just uh, treat it in just the x direction. So I'm going to write the air resistance force as just some negative constant times the x velocity squared. But since we're only in one dimension, I'm just going to write that as v. And, and like I said, these are really vectors, but everything just simplifies to the x direction. So for simplicity, I'm going to drop the notation. So here's the, that's the drag force, negative c, which is just some constant, times v squared. So Newton's second law says that the net force is mass times the acceleration, or the derivative of the velocity with time. And there's only one force, so we get ma equals negative v squared, c v squared. So here we have a differential equation because on this side I have the derivative of velocity, but this side I have the velocity. So it's not, you can't just solve it like you would in the introductory physics. We need to do something a little different. This is what we call situation where we can get a separation of variables. We can get all the v's on one side and all the dt's and t's on the other side. So if I multiply this side by dt, and if I divide this side by v squared, then I get, we'll multiply both sides by dt, divide both sides by v squared, I get this. So I get the v, divide by v squared comes over here, divide by, multiply by dt, and I get that. And then I divide by m, just get the constants all together. So this side of the equation only depends on v, and this side only depends on t. So I can integrate both sides on. So I can integrate this with respect to v, and that with respect to t, and this is the integral of dv over v squared is negative 1 over v. The integral of some constant times dt is that, just t. Now both of these are indefinite integrals, so they have to have a constant. But I, I can just combine them together with just one constant, c. It's a big c. It's not that. That was a dumb move. Okay, anyway. So now, how do I find that constant? If at time t equals z, t equals 0, the velocity is v0, then I can put in v0 and t equals 0, and I get this term goes away, and I get c equals negative 1 over v, right here. So now I know c, I can plug that in over here. Uh, I factor it out, the, uh, this is that v0, this is 1 over, I factor it out 1 over v0, so it comes in there. So I get this term plus 1, it just looks a little bit better. And then I can solve this for v, um, just flipping both sides, and I get v equals, this is a function of t, the initial velocity over 1 plus t over tau. And that tau obviously is just going to be this. Uh, m over, yeah, tau, yeah, m over c over v naught. And why do we divide by that? Because this is like a time divided by a time, and this is a unitless thing on the bottom. So that's going to make more sense that way. Okay, so that's my uh, definition of velocity. Now I need to find the position. Okay, so here's the derivative. The velocity is the derivative of the position with respect to time. So again, I can just integrate both sides with respect to this side. I'd integrate with respect to dx, and this is with t. So it's going to be the integral of v dt. Okay, so if I put in my function v right here, I get uh, the v0 is a constant. It comes out. I get 1 over t, 1 plus, 1 over 1 plus t over tau dt. Now, this looks tough to integrate, but it's not. Let's just call this bottom part, this whole bottom part, u. So I get u equals 1 over t plus tau. Then the derivative, du, would be dt over tau. So I can substitute that in, and I get this integral I left off the v0 is t tau over u du, and I know the integral to that is natural log of u, and then I can put this back in. Okay, that's just substitution. So when I do that, I get x is a function of t, is v0 tau natural log of 1 plus t over tau plus constant. 
And then if at time t equals 0, x is equal to 0, then that c would have to be also 0. So you get that. Boom. I think I like it better when I write it out, but I don't have a board right now. So hopefully that will work. Um, it goes way too fast if I do it on paper, but oh well.